The goal today is to get this timing cover off and put the new camshaft in and put the new lifters in. I'm going to have those soaking in oil the whole time that I'm doing this uh, install here. But I want to get the camshaft in, I want to get the lifters in, get everything on the heads or everything on the uh, block cleaned up. Uh, just clean, clean up the surface a little bit with uh, the whiz wheel. And uh, I've already gotten started, you know, removed the front bumper and took out the radiator. And that's going to give me the clearance I need down here. So that's going to give me all the clearance I need and I can move this condenser forward and backward as needed. It'll give me enough clearance to get the camshaft out and a new camshaft in. So the only things I have to remove yet is the front timing cover. And to do that, I got to remove the AC compressor. I said condenser yesterday, but AC compressor has to come off. I have to take off the harmonic balancer. So I got to go run over to my boy Scotty's to get a better impact. My 3 8 impact just isn't doing the trick. And then once that stuff's off, get the puller, pull that off the whole rest of the way. And then I'll be able to get the timing cover off. I'm going to be replacing the water pump. And I'm also going to be replacing the oil pump. And just going to put a blind eye to the cam bearings because, again, like I said before, they're fine. I'm not worried about them. So I got to go get some parts. And so by the end of today, we should have a brand new camshaft in there. And everything should be ready as far as this is concerned. And the only thing I'll have to focus on is getting the cylinder heads back on the car. Alrighty, I got everything I need. I went and visited Scotty, took the smart car. Good old trusty smart car, still kicking it. I'm gonna try this. This is actually a GM style puller. I'm gonna try that, see if that works. If not, I have a three jaw puller to try on that harmonic balancer. Got a socket, nice impact ratchet, and uh, or impact driver, impact wrench whatever you want to call it and uh valve spring compressor so got all stuff so we can start to disassemble this bad boy all right so this should just knock this right off here hopefully it clears the condenser but with that radiator out of the way i've got quite a bit of room should be able to fit that in there just barely works oh gotta go back in she's loose i'm gonna see if that tool actually fits in there it might might surprise myself with this one yeah it's gonna work well sweet some gm tools on the old chrysler in the oil pan because I couldn't get to the bottom bolt good enough to break the oil pump pickup tube loose the bolt for that so I loosen the oil pan just enough so that I can get my wrench in there and I should be able to spin it off by hand and hopefully it doesn't go falling in the engine which probably won't be a huge deal because I have a magnet so I should be able to get it back out getting it back on is going to be the hard part I believe if you're doing just a camshaft install you don't really have to worry about this oil pump but I'm replacing the whole timing set and I'm also replacing the oil pump so I do have to worry about this stuff so we'll see. Have to have my magnet handy. 
because I think this is gonna fall. <laughs> Alrighty, so victory is mine. What I ended up doing is I dropped the oil pan even more, folded this gasket up a little bit, then I was able to get in underneath it. And I think I should be able to get that bolt in pretty easy now. Wiggle it a little bit there. You don't want to get crazy wiggling it because you don't want to loosen it. You don't want to loosen the oil pickup. So get a screwdriver because there's an O ring in there. There we go. Yeah. Give you just enough room to not do anything. Oil pumps off. All right, next thing, timing set. Just gotta remove this bolt here. Just gonna slide this off as a set. Yes, you can have Taco Bell after we're done here. Again, this is why we're waiting to change the oil after. Because I'm going to be knocking crap in here all the time, so... I'm not getting crazy on it. It doesn't even look like there's a spring on my tensioner anymore. It doesn't look like there's any tension on my tensioner anymore, I should say. I'll have to look at that compared to the new one. There it is plates off now what all this work has been for the camshaft removal all right so you're going to need something that's going to give you some type of leverage holding on this camshaft here and before i actually start removing this i'm going to make sure that this condenser is out of the way Everything's out of the way enough so that I can get this camshaft out because it's probably going to occupy this much space so if not more but we shall see and slow and steady is the way to be and slow and steady wins the race as they say so I'm going to pull this out as level as you can because you're going to have to get it past all the different cam bearings you don't really want to knock it on them. So that's why you want this bolt here. So you're sliding it out of there. Kind of keeping it level as possible. This is the camshaft, dude. That's a long camshaft. Yes, it is. It goes all the way from here all the way to the back of the engine, dude. Ooh. And we just got to take our time. This is it's important to take our time because we don't want to damage anything when we're coming yeah, out. Yeah, we this. don't want to break anything when you go racing. That's right. You definitely don't want to go break. You don't want to break anything when you go racing. That's for sure. Yeah, because you don't want to break any of those things that are awkward on that on that thing there it is dude ta-da you don't want to break these things no you don't so that's why you don't yank it out yep you just take your time yeah slow and steady I, Ugh, is this yeah, heavy I, here look is this heavy yeah. got it yeah sure whoa is that heavy or what yeah, it doesn't hurt my arms. I can hold it. Oh, well, you're a muscle man, aren't you? Can I put it over on that table? Yep. If we're going to look at it, then we got to inspect it. Make sure nothing's wrong with it. Here? Yep, right here. Awesome. Get your hands all oily? Not that much. Not too bad. I can get this stuff. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna have to move the bike out of the way. Yeah. Alrighty. There she is. Old camshaft out. Now we got a brand new one in that box over there. We're gonna have to unbury and we're gonna put that in. 
The camshaft bearings look just fine. I can't, I can't hardly see anything wrong with them right now. They look perfectly fine. We're gonna just, you know, go with it. They look great. Awesome looking bearings. All right, before I install the new cam, I am going to just take the whiz wheel here and I'm just gonna clean up the head gasket surface. I'm gonna clean up the timing cover surface. It's gonna get all that stuff knocked back there, give it a nice clean. I'm not going crazy. I'm not gonna knock any layers off. I'm just basically getting any of the build up crud that's on there. I'm just gonna knock that stuff down and then that'll be nice and smooth, ready to put on a nice fresh gasket. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And I got everything kind of blocked off. As soon as I get that done, I'm gonna clean everything out, make sure the lifter boards are all clear, blast some brake cleaner down in there. I'm doing this now because I don't want the camshaft in there getting a bunch of dirt and grit on it. So I figure I can blast all the lifter boards out with some brake cleaner. All that stuff's gonna fall into the oil pan and uh, we should be good to go. Alrighty, everything's nice and clean. Sprayed some brake clean in there to uh, knock any uh, pieces of dirt out of the lifter bores. And then after I did that, took some oil. I had didn't have any more WD-40, but I did have some type of oil-based, petroleum-based uh, spray. So I just coated everything really good. That way nothing starts to rust up on me. But that's all in there, and now I'm just gonna pop the camshaft in. It's actually starting to rain, so I might have to take a pause real quick and uh, run inside, because it's starting to come down. All right, the rain has let up, so now we are down to the moment of truth. Cleaned everything up real nicely. Just gonna put assembly lube on this thing and start installing it into the car. Start out by putting a little bit of assembly lube on these bearing here. And then I'm just gonna put assembly lube on the cam as I start to put it in. I'll put it a little bit on it and then as I feed it in, I'll put a little bit more on as I go. One thing you can never have enough of is assembly lube. You want there to be a bunch of it on there, especially for startup, so it's not a dry start. So don't be afraid to get a bunch on there. Now, I'm gonna find the cam sprocket bolt. Put that on the cam. And I'm gonna try and angle this just like when I removed it. Try and angle this up a little bit. Fish that in and try and get it back far enough. Oh, let me remove bolts in the way, of course. Try and put that in as straight to the engine as we can. And get in so far and set this thing on the bearings right there. Then we will put more assembly lube on there. Nice and easy. You want it to slide in there. You don't want to jam that in there. Mess everything up. All right, so this plate being new already has the pin to hold it back. To hold the tension on it. So the timing chain should just slip on there, no problem. So put these bolts in. And I'm gonna torque everything to, from what I found, looks like about 21 foot-pounds of torque. 
One thing about when you're putting bolts in, uh, you want to make sure that they thread in pretty easily by hand. If they bind up or get tight at all, you might want to take some compressed air or some brake cleaner and blast out the uh, the hole because there could be dirt, sludge, or water, oil. Something could be in there preventing the bolts from tightening. Because these should these should hand tighten. You shouldn't have to force them in with a ratchet. If you do, then more than likely you're probably not going to get them tightened down the whole way. And if that's the case, they'll never. They'll never be tight and they can come loose and last thing you want is a two dollar bolt destroying your engine so just make sure that they thread in nicely by hand all righty so 21 foot pounds it's not tight but it's what they recommend i guess Unless my, unless my Google search was wrong. There we go. All right, now to time this stuff is actually pretty simple. Uh, you want to make sure, again, the number one piston is at top dead center. Looks like the keyway is kind of one, two o'clock position on the crankshaft. But yeah, just make sure that that number one piston is at top dead center. And then the chain itself has identifying marks. So you just want to line this one painted link or, or dark link up. I labeled this. There's a dot on the camshaft sprocket. So that dot right there, you're going to want to line that up with that dot there. And then on the bottom sprocket here, you want to line up this dot and you want to put it between those two darker links okay so i have this set up now so the two darker links surround that lower mark and then the one dark link lines up with the dot on the top as long as you have that set up like that your timing is correct you'll just have to make adjustments to the engine whether it be moving the camshaft one way or the other or moving the crankshaft one way or the other. But this here should be pretty close to lined up. We'll see how close it actually is. All right, so I'm just gonna slip this on here. Like I said, don't let it go slack on you. Move my rags out of the way a little bit, push them down. So I'll line first the bottom up. Go a bit. There we go. So that's on. And I just gotta pop the top in there. Oh, we've gotta get the chain on the correct side of the guide. Now I've got a little bit more slack. Slide that in there. There we go. She was probably just a, a fraction off. And then, as long as nothing moved, it should still be lined up on the bottom. Now, what I'll do is I'll take the phone and I'll snap a photo of it, and everything should still be lined up. So, I'm just going to do that. That's why cameras are great. I can just come down here, snap a photo, and then through the magic of editing, I could show you guys what I'm looking at, which is perfect. I'm still right between on there. So that's lined up on the bottom. The dot is lined up on the top. Everything is in place right now. So my timing is spot on. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this crank or cam bolt. And then since everything's timed, I don't have to worry about anything jumping time. I'm just going to tighten down this cam bolt here. Google is a wonderful thing. So I've got it 
two locations. So camshaft sprocket, it says 90 foot pounds on that one. And this one also says camshaft sprocket, 90 foot pounds. So 90 foot pounds is what it's gonna get. 90 foot pounds is quite a bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run the crank bolt in temporarily. I'm gonna blast it with a few Ugga Duggas. What that'll do is it'll allow me to hold the timing assembly. Now I use Harbor Freight torque wrenches. I don't know what you guys use, but I have had nothing but luck with Harbor Freight torque wrenches. As long as you set them back to close to zero, I don't set them all the way to zero. I leave a little bit of tension on them. But as long as you do that, I've, I've had no problems with these torque wrenches and they seem to do the job just fine. So I'm going to hold this lower bolt, crank bolt, and I'm just going to tighten the cam bolt down here. There it is. 90 foot pounds. Oh yeah, that timing chain is a lot tighter than it was. There's no movement in there now. So yeah, my timing chain was definitely a little bit laxed on, on the last one there. So now it's all good to go. Everything is still within time. So now I'm just going to pop the new oil pump on. I don't, I think it's the same as the stock one, so I don't think there's any modifications I have to do to this. I did that on purpose because there are other oil pump options out there, but all the other ones I saw you had to modify. This one should be a direct bolt on with no modification necessary. All right, so I have the lifter soaking. I don't know, I've watched videos and they said you don't have to do this because they're pre-oiled, blah, 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 but... Any of the videos I've seen where they didn't pre-oil them, boy, they make a heck of a racket when they start them up. And, uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm not, not a huge fan of it. So I have them soaking. Another thing I like to do when I'm installing a new oil pump is I like to take oil, the recommended oil for the car, so 0W40 for this one, and then I just like to fill up the little pump with oil. Just get it moving around in there. Now I know as soon as I go to put this oil pump on, it's all gonna spill out everywhere, but for me at least it lubricates everything. It, it gets every, the process started. It's, it's less time that this thing's gonna be without oil. Again, I realize that they pre-oil this stuff from the factory, but for me, if I could put oil somewhere, I'm going to put oil there because honestly, there's, there's nothing, there's no, there's no negative side effects to doing this. You know what I mean? So tons of oil, make sure that it's nice and lubed up. All right. Another thing I got is this comp cams valve train assembly spray and I coated the timing chain with it again same concept i don't want to dry i don't want to dry start on this engine so got some assembly spray all this stuff is cheap you know what i mean i didn't break the bank getting this stuff so it was well worth the money in my opinion all righty so we're just gonna slide this oil pump on and I believe it'll just slot on there. I just got to get that down enough that I can twist the oil pump. There we go. Nothing to it. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. No big deal. Alrighty, I can't find any information. I thought there was information on shimming these things. 
but I can't find anything. If you guys know, I mean, it'll be too late by the time this video's out. This cover, everything will be back on. So I'm just going to slap her back together. And uh, like I said, I remember briefly seeing it somewhere. Either it was a video or a how-to, but I can't for the life of me find it. Melling doesn't specifically say anything. I mean, I think if it was a big issue, they would say something with the kit. I mean, I would, they tell you what to actually put in there spring-wise for the car. So I would imagine they'd also tell you that it requires shimmed, but I don't see anything on it. I also don't see my torque wrench. So give me a minute. All right, I did find torque specs on this, however. 21 foot-pounds, same as the timing plate. I think if this was a high performance race engine, I might be a little bit more concerned with that. But it's not, so I'm not going to get crazy on stuff like that. So everything is tight. Double check my oil pickup, that's tight. Now I can clean up my timing cover. I gotta go wash that off. And then I'll be able to stick that back on. This seems like a pretty good stopping place here. Clean the tops of those pistons. Those are the ones sticking up, so I just gotta do that to the rest of them. But the lifters are in. I'm all lubed up. They are in, ready to rock and roll. I've been letting them soak a majority of the day today, so they should be relatively pumped up. I don't know, it's probably still gonna make a bunch of noise when I fire it up, but we'll see. Timing cover is on. The radiator is not in yet. Uh, I'm gonna see if there's a way that I can try and get a torque wrench on that crank bolt. I hit it with the impact, but I'm not 100% satisfied with it. But uh, if there's a way I can get it on there and actually torqued, that's what I'm going to try. But for now, it's a good stopping point there. Engine-wise, I just got to clean up this humongous mess I just made. But I'm not done tonight. I'm going to be taking out all the valves. And I'm just going to be cleaning up the carbon that's on the back sides of them. I'm sure you can't see in there, but whatever. So I'm going to be pulling all the valves out. I'm going to take them to work tomorrow and just knock all the carbon off with the wire wheel. Quick and easy. And then I'm going to pull out all the valve seals. I am replacing those. I have a brand new set of valve seals. And I'm also going to be installing the springs at that time and the new retainers. So that'll be in the next upload. I'm just going to take, like I said, this stuff apart, clean it clean the valves off at least and then clean the heads up you know get the carbon out of there and get the dirt out of the intakes but that's going to be it for tonight i said we'll get pick this thing up uh tomorrow or whenever i get back on it again so i'm going to get busy taking these cylinder heads cylinder it's late I'm going to get busy taking the cylinder heads apart, at least getting the valves out. But I'm going to end the video off here because all the other camera batteries are dead. So I can't really do any time lapse stuff and my phone's almost about to die too. So I've been recording for a couple hours and uh, yeah, it's just something quick. I'll show you how to put the valves back in, but I got to get this done because like I said, I'm on a deadline. So I'm just going to knock these valves out tonight. And then I'm going to pick the cameras up, charge them all up, and uh, get back at it tomorrow and take you guys with me. So thanks for sticking around for this long in the journey. Um, making good progress. Haven't really run into any snags and haven't really seen any issues with the engine so far. Everything's looking really good on it. But uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you liked the video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Any comments you'd like to leave, do so down below. And... Uh, 
hit that subscribe button smash that notification bell you'll get updates on uh chrysler build um so we're about halfway through and uh yeah it was a good night good day thanks for checking it out guys